What's up guys, Brody here, and today we are taking a look at the SteelSeries Rival 3 Gaming Mouse. So I believe SteelSeries is aiming this uh, mouse towards really every gamer, but I think towards gamers out there that do not want to spend a lot on a gaming mouse, maybe on a budget, but also show that you do not need to spend a lot of money to have a decent gaming mouse. The Rival 3 goes for $30, and one of the mice that I think it's you know, you know, know aiming towards to compete against or have some similarities is the G203. The Rival 3 is a smallish six button right-handed gaming mouse with a matte black finish to it. Now I think over time it will show some wear to it where your fingers rest and also this will pick up some oil prints from your fingers. The measurements of the mouse that I got was 120 millimeters long, front 57 millimeters, rear is at 67 millimeters, 57 millimeters at the grip where your, you know, your thumb would rest, and 37 millimeters at the highest point of the hump and then the weight of the mouse is 76 grams on my scale. So just comparing the Rival 3 to the G203 is a little bit longer and a little bit skinnier and lighter than the G203. To me, this is a fingertip or claw grip user. I do not see someone being able to palm grip this. Well, at least I can't do to I that I have, you know, pretty big hands. The buttons are not bad. You have your triggers one and two, scroll wheel, DPI button, and two side buttons. Triggers 1 and 2 have barely any pre and post travel to them. There is some slight wobble to the triggers if you move them you know, side to side, but nothing to worry about. The clicks are very satisfying with that uh, nice tactile snap to them. The switches are Steel Series blue switches. Not sure who they are made from. If you know, let me know. But they are the same switches that were used in the Sensei 10. We get up to 60 million clicks, which is amazing for a $30 mouse. The scroll wheel is pretty nice as well. It's pretty smooth. It has some light texture to it. The steps are well defined and also good resistance to the wheel so you won't you know, be scrolling too far. Side buttons are not my favorite and it's just due to the size. They are way too small for me and have this blade-like shape to them. Just not my favorite you know, side buttons at all. But the switches be behind them are very good. Great tactile snap to them. They are using the Cali white switches and the pre and post travel is good as well. I mean, obviously we have to throw in a sound test in there for you guys because it would not be the same if I did not. So here's a sound test for you guys. So as for the performance of the mouse, the sensor is the SteelSeries True Move Core, and it can track up to 8,500 DPI and is accurate up to 300 IPS or inch per second. Those are numbers well above an average, you know, gaming mouse for under $50. Uh, example, the G203, you can only go up to, you know, 8,000 DPI and can track uh, up to 200 inch per second. The, for example, another one, the uh, Model D, you know, yes, has a better DPI, but that only tracks up to like, I think 250 inch per second. Only bad thing that I ran into so far with this mouse is the liftoff distance. I feel like it is too high and unfortunately in the software, there is no option to adjust this as of yet. I think this is, you know, where SteelSeries missed out on and I'm not sure if they can fix this with a simple firmware update or not, but this is something I think that they need to fix. The mouse feet, uh, the shape is good, but unfortunately the feet are pretty thin and also black Teflon. I mean, I was not really expecting pure white PTFE feet for a $30 mouse, but hey, you never know. The glide to me is not bad, uh, maybe on the slower side a little bit, but not just, it's not too bad, very controllable. Now there are no lips around the mouse feet, so you could probably put whatever you want on it, like my favorite, the Zowie feet, uh, might be good on this, or just wait until they come out with the, you know, faster glides from say, core pads or something like that for the Rival 3. 
The cable is a thin, flexible rubber cable, not my favorite, obviously. So we do have, uh, you know, a couple of options here. We can swap out the night, you know, swap it out for a nice paracord, which I am thinking about doing, or just pair it up with a mouse bungee to help keep it out of the way. But again, it's a $30 mouse. The Rival 3 has a nice RGB lighting layout. Looks like there's only two customizable RGB layouts, but technically there are three. There is the SteelSeries logo towards the, you know, the rear, plus a rim around the bottom edge of the mouse. The rim counts as three lighting points because you can set a front, middle, and rear areas separately, but I ju I'm just letting you know that the logo part is part of the rear for when you customize. As for the software, the Rival 3 uses the SteelSeries Engine 3. Not a whole lot here and is pretty simple to use. You can adjust your macro set up to five different profiles so when you change your DPI button, it will change to what you set for that pro uh, profile. You can change your DPI acceleration and deceleration, pulling rate and angle snap. I think that the you know angle snap and acceleration is pointless to me because I never use that. I rather have the liftoff distance settings in here because again, it is a little bit too high for me. You can also go and go ahead and change your RGB from uh, steady, color shift, multicolor, or disable it altogether. Again, you can set different zones to different effects on, or certain colors. So wrapping up here, I think this is a very good mouse for a thirty, you know, for thirty dollars. Um, if if you have the G two or three and want to maybe upgrade, I really think that you will like this. Maybe you don't have the G two or three and just looking for a decent mouse to get back into gaming. This is definitely worth checking out, especially if you just don't want to spend a lot of money right now. Yes, there are some things I think still a series needs to change, like the cable, the lift, you know, lift off distance for sure. That could possibly be fixed, you know, again by a simple software update not sure uh maybe better feet uh feet underneath it but hey i you know we could easily replace it by ourselves not a big deal to me the side buttons are too small but that does not mean it would not be great for someone else so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video you know if you have any questions hit me up in the comment section and i will do my best on getting back to you guys uh make sure to hit that you know like button because it definitely helps the channel big time and if you are you know new to this channel you know, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button i would definitely appreciate it thank you very much again my name is brody and i will catch you guys on the next video see you